you live in Delhi, you're paying 97 rupees per litre. If you're in Chennai, you're paying 102 rupees. If you live in Rajasthan, you pay 104 rupees. In Kolkata, you'd be paying 106 rupees. And if you're in Bhopal, you're paying 108 rupees. I'm talking about petrol. Now, there are many across the country who have stopped using tomatoes in at least one of their meals because of the sky-high prices of tomatoes. But how do you stop commuting? How do you travel from home to office and back every day? Public transport isn't always feasible. And anyway, can the already burdened public transport infrastructure even bear the load? The Congress today teared into the government, accusing it of profiteering by mercilessly imposing high taxes. Congress MP Jairam Ramesh claimed that crude oil prices have dipped by 35% in the last one year, but the prices of petrol and diesel have not been reduced in India. Trinamool Congress Vice President J. Majumdar questioned the BJP's oil pricing policy. This is a... Uh permanent question against uh, Modi government about their oil policy and oil, rather oil pricing policy of Narendra Modi. The thing is now international crude oil price has gone down. Moreover, Modi is claiming that we are buying cheaper, more, cheaper oil from Russia that is cheaper than the uh, international market price. But at the end, the Indian people, they are paying the highest price for the petrol, diesel, everything. The Bharti Janata Party, meanwhile, retorted saying fuel is the costliest in the Congress-ruled Rajasthan. Listen in. सरकार बार बार इस बात कहती है कि केंद्र पेट्रोल डीजल के भाव कम करे हिमाचल में ये चुनाव में गए उसमें इन्होंने ये कहा था कि महंगाई कम करेंगे और वहां जाते ही तीन रुपये प्रति लीटर बढ़ा दिया राजस्थान में हिंदुस्तान का सबसे महंगा पेट्रोल डीजल मिलता है वहां कम करने की बात नहीं करते हैं जबकि भारत सरकार विभिन्न विषयों में जनता को राहत दे रही है छूट दे रही है फ्री में अनाज दे रही है पेंशन दे रही है खाद पर सब्सिडी दे रही है और बहुत सारी सुविधाएं दे रही है Now before I bring in my panelists let's explain to you how fuel prices decided in India From 2017 fuel prices in the country are revised on a daily basis at 6 am by oil marketing companies like Indian Oil Corporation and Hindustan Petroleum this is overseen by the PPAC or the Petroleum Planning and Analysis Cell under the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. These companies make these decisions based on various factors, crude oil cost, demand, taxes, the rupee dollar rate, price charge to dealers and their commission. All of these factors play a crucial role in what you end up paying at the petrol pump. How is the calculation done? Well, basic price plus freight charges plus excise duty, which is imposed by the central government, plus the state VAT, which is imposed by the state government. To help you better understand, let me give you an example. If in Mumbai, petrol costs 111 rupees, the base price is 59 rupees. Excise duty levied by the central government is 19 rupees 9 paise. Add to that 26% state VAT plus 5 rupees 12 paise per litre additional tax, which equals to 111 rupees price. So the total tax added is about 52 rupees. Amid the war of words, the post COVID era, and the ongoing Russia Ukraine conflict, who is facing the brunt in all of this? The middle class. Listen into some voices from our cities. Through your uh, news channel, I would like to suggest government ki since uh, crude pile has been reduced, some portion or some ratio of this uh, decreased prices should be passed on to the user so that people like us, common people uh, can uh, not to bear that much high fuel prices and at the same time uh, it will give a relief, bit of relief to every, uh, every citizen of India. 
and uh, just to give you an example right now I started traveling to metro before that I'm traveling to car but because of increased prices you know before covid it was 70 to 75 rupees per liter now it is 100 rupees so because of increased prices i have to mean some you know, travel by public transport itni garmi mein aapko yahan wahan dakke khana pad raha hai all this so this is my uh, through your platform i request government to uh, reduce the prices well. we are the affected the middle class people only affected what we are paying they are not giving any benefit to us they should consider us as a middle class family what we are paying with tax straight away they are deducting our just one from income itself so they should consider us pure ko tax thoda kam karna padega petrol diesel mein bahut tax zyada hai abhi idhar congress government aake hai kuch facility 2 2000 rupya de raha line mein khada ke dusro cheezon ka rate bahut zyada kar diya kuch ne tarkari ka rate dekho vegetable ka rate bahut zyada kar diya pura isme nikal ke isme dal raha hai तो सरकार आने से क्या फायदा है कुछ तो हेल्प होना ना पब्लिक के लिए अब तो टैक्स का रेट भी थोड़ा कम करना एजुकेशन करना कुछ भी नहीं है खाली वही बता रहे हैं So you heard those voices. Let me now get in my guests tonight. I'm joined by Salman Sauce from the Congress Party. He's also an economist and author. Aris Patania from the BJP joins us, and Amirullah Khan, economist, joins us on Beyond the Headline. Gentlemen, welcome uh, to Mirror Now. Thank you very much for talking with us tonight. First of all, let me come to you, Aris Patania. You heard those voices. Why is it that despite being uh, at a 15-month low? Uh, of the global crude oil price here in india we're only seeing a rise in petrol and diesel prices shreya first of all a very good evening to you and all my fellow panelists let's first of all credit the bharatiya janata party sarkar for maintaining a virtual stability in petrol diesel and natural gas prices despite the worst russia ukraine conflict Let's all compliment the Bharatiya Janata Party Sarkar for convincing all the BJP ruled states to do away with their statutory part of VAT just to keep the petrol and diesel prices under a under a particular level. May I put a very very sweet and simple question to the Congress and to Mr. Jairam Ramesh, who has raised their hand, who has tried to flag the issue on. purely misconceived miscalculated and unjustified counts what about the oil bonds which the congress had ultimately given to the oil companies and those oil bonds the redemption has started from 2021 and it ultimately whittled down in as late as only in 2026 which itself ties the hands of the government in regulating the oil prices what about the increase in the congress rule date in upa we have data to substantiate our claim that the petrol prices raised by 77% and diesel prices raised by 66% under bharatiya janata party rule under nda it's petrol for 40% and diesel by 57% also so on the so let us speak constructively let's speak with regard to the metro issue the matter remains that uh, we need to lessen our dependency on petrol we need to engage in better diplomacy we need to enhance the local and the domestic consumptions also we need to negotiate uh, very very beautifully with the opec and opec is as good as a carter and all that we need i i think in conclusion what i want to say that government is maintaining an eagle's eye on the on the raising on the on the nose diving on the appraising the the prices of crude oil prices and whatsoever measures are required to keep it under a stable limit they shall be taken within a commensurate period of time no time to play okay. politics otherwise i have been able to demonstrate that bad economics and bad politics is at the root of the spiraling of oil and diesel prices i am hopeful that within the next period of time okay some, okay let me bring uh, in salman sauce to the russia yes. ukraine conflict also madam some constructive measures have been taken and i am hopeful and in the next future also constructive measures shall be taken by the government and to keep the inflation and the overall economic system under proper proper control and proper see things will virtually okay. lip down to dot line okay salman sauce please okay salman sauce uh, you know it's all very well to attack the government and say that it hasn't been able to control the fuel prices despite 
global crude oil prices being at a 15 month low and all of that but the fact of the matter is that you know congress uh, ruled rajasthan also has fuel priced at 104 rupees per liter that's enormous that is a huge burden on the middle class well first of all uh, uh, <coughs> rajasthan or any other uh, state in the country prices its fuel not because they want to but because the central government has created a, a situation where state finances are in a shambles and basically what what the modi government has done is they, they have extortionary prices now for fuel and they've had this fuel policy um, in, in place for years now so this is the, we we, are, we keep talking about this every few months there's a debate about this but this goes back many many years so uh, for the nine years that they've been in power, uh, they've collected almost 32 lakh crore rupees in uh, in taxes, fuel taxes. And you know, I don't want to hear anything about oil bonds and all that. They they still blame the previous the the government that was in place 10 years back. They still they they still will not take any responsibility for anything that happens in this country, whether it is Manipur, whether it is fuel prices, whatever. Now. Look at the excise duty on petrol, just as an example. Excise, excise duty now, right now, on petrol is 118% higher than it was under UPA. And for diesel, it is about 360% higher. So did we impose those taxes? No, it's the government. And by the way, if other things were going well with the, peop uh, with the people, if there were jobs in this country, and if, were, if the taxes were low, in other ways, then one could understand. But there are no jobs. Their, uh, their uh, GST collections have been extremely high and they have been disproportionately uh, on the poor and middle classes. Disproportionately, disproportionately so. 65% of GST is paid by the bottom half of the country. So who asked them to price gas cylinders at 1200 rupees when they used to be 450 rupees under UPA. We did not ask them to do that. do that. They did that. Did the prime minister not come up with the Ujwala scheme and did he not boast that everybody was going to get clean fuel? What has happened is that now those fuel cylinders are empty because people cannot afford those prices. And who is to blame for that? Not the Congress government. That is the BJP government. Now, it is up to them. You know, I, I've been I've been tracking I've been tracking uh, these prices from Mr. Vajpayee's time uh, through Man, Dr. Manmohan Singh's time and now to Mr. Modi's time. Mr. Modi's the pricing of fuel under Mr. Modi has been far higher, far higher than what uh, it was under Prime Minister Mo, uh, Manmohan Singh or Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee. In fact, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Vajpayee government was second. The ranking is second. So most expensive, Prime Minister Modi. Second most expensive, Prime Minister Vajpayee. Third was uh, uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. So I think... Okay, Aris Patania respond to that. Front. All right. And by the way, th this is creating inflationary pressures across the economy. And it has done so for a long, long time. Now they can say whatever they want, but they are to Dear blame sir. for what the miserable condition of the people right now. Dear sir, why don't you... Okay, Aris Patania to respond first? to that. What is the logic question. behind what... I call it... I yes, call please it as go a, on. I, I call it as a leading question from Shreya that but you have to speak about the highest level of fuel prices in Rajasthan. What answer I, do you have I, that I, the I did, Congress I ruled states, I, despite repeated I, requests made by the union government, they have not been able to dispense with? Yes, or but let me, why they have not let, as yet dispensed yes. with their statutory part of VAT, which could have stabilized explain, the petrol yes. and diesel prices by a, by a very, very considerable margin. I just cite in Delhi. In Delhi, the petrol goes by 96, point, 96 rupees 72 pesa. And rupees 15 rupees 0. 0.71 pesa is the VAT which is charged by Delhi Sarkar on the poor, yes. on the helpless, yes. and on the gullible, yes. the consumers of oil and diesel. So, sir, my respectful submission. Let's let's have a let's first of all a pan India perspective, a pan India effort. The government, in all its fairness and in all its wisdom, I listed the measures. So, no, uh, I think on this on this point, you should you in fact you should not be asking this question because 
the blame here also goes to you because you have decimated state finances. The Modi government has decimated state finances, and now they want uh, opposition rule states basically to go bankrupt just and have no finances whatsoever. If, if you if if you had not decimated state finances, maybe Rajasthan government and Delhi government would have been able to support their people. Sir, but what sir, your government's policy, active policy. You should just look at, you should just look at, you should, Mr. Patania, I, I urge you, I urge you, charges. Mr. Patania, to go and look at state finances under the Modi government. Look at what objective observers are saying. You have decimated state finances. Absolutely you have not. killed off Absolutely fiscal not. federalism. We now, you cannot tell people, give us more tax from, breaks sir, because from. you don't have, you have given us no money. Mr. So, you are an economist. Come up with Mr. Patania, R.S. Patania, isn't it? You see the overall outlays. The overall plan allocation. Okay, okay. The overall, the overall Just a little point that I want to add. I wanted to ask R.S. Patania. Please, 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 madam. R.S. Patania, isn't it true that the center earns more in tax revenue than state governments, whatever be the case, you know, whoever decimated whatever. But the point of the matter is that on ground, the center is earning in terms of tax revenue more than the state governments are levying the tax through fuel. How yes. does that change anything at all in terms of the burden on the taxpayer, in terms of the burden on the middle class and what the Indian prices are as compared to what the oh, international well. global crude oil prices are? Shreya, uh, that is just by saying, everybody knows, let me say with full respect and responsibility, one statement is that the crude oil prices are a direct determinant of whatsoever the pricing of petrol, diesel, and natural gas goes in a particular country, including India also. But to say Correct, that right. only, only and only and exclusively the prices of crude oils, they are the only determinant for determining the petrol and diesel prices, the answer is an abject no. There are a multitude of factors. How, if we go on, and, uh, Absolutely. And we, no, we are not we saying that, Aras Patani. The, the, the three oil companies, madam, the three oil companies, they had suffered in the last part also. I'll just refer to one statement. Of, I have just gone through the statement of Murli Deola, the then Petroleum Minister, while responding to the immediate and the and the abject rise in the petrol and diesel. But he says that we need to compensate the oil companies which have suffered a deficit, a losses of rupees 70,300 crores. So my point is, that uh, though the government has a control, but that control is a limited control. That control is not at all the level of the crude prices, the multitude of factors, the international situations, and uh, the overall the overall international scenario. Okay. Also, how USA has acted in the in the post COVID yeah. low recoveries of China, a slower growth, a a lesser demand, a lesser production output by OPEC countries. Also, there's a multitude yeah. of factors. And yeah, I let me very respectfully okay, submit. I think, I'll again yeah, the factors, that, that with all full respect and responsibility, the government is keeping an eagle's eye on the overall scenario, on the overall international scenario, on the overall okay, economic. Okay. Uh, uh, I think the right person also, to make us also, understand, to help yeah. us understand the factors that influence is Mr. Amirullah Khan. Amirullah Khan, uh, you know, thank you so much for patiently waiting, first of all. Uh, but let me now uh, get you in and please help us understand, uh, you know, what the Congress is saying, how much of that is fair and legitimate, and what about the other factors that contribute? Why are we seeing this kind of a situation here in India? Yeah, Shreya, thank you so much for, first of all, for, uh, you know, discussing this issue. Uh, you know, it seemed to be the, uh, the case that over the last few years, all of us had settled down to this new equilibrium of 100 rupees. And, uh, you know, uh, a few years ago, it would have been impossible to think of fuel prices above 100 uh, without uh, fearing people coming out on the roads and protesting. Today, it's kind of, uh, you know, accepted that, yeah, petrol and diesel will be around 100 rupees. So the first thing that has happened is that there seems to be some sort of an agreement that fuel prices have come to rest there. The danger in this, and that's the big issue, is that uh, uh, the fuel price, when it goes up, a lot of people make this very simplistic assumption 
that look at the demand for petrol. If fuel prices are very high and are unaffordable, then demand should have been going down. That's what basic economics says. But what they forget is that petrol or diesel is a commodity that, in, that suffers from the fact that people have to buy whatever the price. You know, there is this elasticity that economists talk about. And the problem with fuel is that you have to buy petrol, even if it goes to 200 rupees. But is that, a, is that, uh, is that enough, in, uh, enough reason for us to say, okay, so let it be high and let it go on? No, the danger is that when people spend a lot of money in buying something as essential as fuel, then it means that they are spending less on something that is equally essential. And what we are seeing and what the data is showing, and this is what is the dangerous part, is that people are actually consuming less by way of food, by, lay of, by way of health, and by way of education when they are paying for these high prices of fuel. And that's why in a situation where fuel prices are free and are set by the market, there is a responsibility that comes on us because people will substitute what, uh, what is what they think is non-essential, and that usually is healthcare or education. And that is not good for national development. The other point that I must make is that there is definitely a, a, a point that the state is, that the government is making that, look, we need to be able to earn money. There is no other source of income. GST is our major source, and fuel prices uh, must stay high because that tax must be collected. The important thing here to understand is that, well, that, that you know, that's already been said that a lot of this money is being collected from the poor because remember that indirect taxes tax the poor higher than the rich. You know, when I pay uh, 100 rupees for petrol and someone who's earning a million dollars pays 100 rupees for, a petrol, for petrol, then I am paying much more by way of taxes than that millionaire. Therefore, it is very important to understand that our dependence on indirect taxation has become very high, and that is resulting in a situation where we are taxing the poor more than the rich. The final point I want to make here, and this is a very crucial point, uh, which, which in the overall debate we seem to be missing, is that we have become very sanguine and, and proud about the fact that our GST collections and our indirect collections are rising. You know, it's not a good economy where indirect tax collections rise like this. It is direct tax collections that should rise. But because we have, be we have now uh, become a state where we want to promote and protect the wealth creator and not the one who is at the receiving end, that we are reducing direct tax rates and increasing indirect tax rates. This, in the long run, is going to be difficult, is going to be tough. The fact that, uh, that Mr. Pathania makes, and it's a, it's a valid point that the government is making, that there have been losses. Oil marketing companies have lost a lot of money during COVID, uh, because of, during COVID and because of the war, and they must get some window to, uh, to undo that damage. But that damage shouldn't come at the cost of people consuming less by way of food, health, and education. That's dangerous. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Amirullah Khan, also, since you mentioned GST, my next question was, in fact, related to that. What's the viability of getting fuel under GST? Wouldn't it be smoother and easier for the center and the state governments to operate that way and therefore lesser burden and lesser, you know, cumbersome process for the middle class, for the taxpayer citizen as well? That's the absolutely right question, Shay, and thanks for asking that question. You know, if, if everything were done in the right uh, manner, in the right spirit, then, and, and I'm punning on the word spirit, uh, then we would have had uh, both petrol and alcohol under GST long ago. It is inexplicable that we continue to keep GST and uh, that we continue to keep petrol, diesel, and alcohol outside GST. If we are a country that wants one tax one for one nation, then we must have everything under GST. It is bizarre that we keep uh, these two uh, items out, and then we fight over whether the state is whether states are doing the right thing or the center is doing the right thing. And unless we do that uh, that uh, stabilization and that inclusion, we will continue to have this this debate where we just apportion blame to each other. 
the fact of the matter is that one has to be sensitive to the fact that core inflation, that fuel price inflation uh, feeds into overall inflation. And that is why over the last few years, we have had unprecedented rates of inflation. It's not just the fuel that is the problem. What fuel is doing is increasing every price. And when prices go up like that, in a situation when we have mass unemployment, in a time when we have a stagnant rural income growth, then we are taxing the poor and we are ensuring that these, the poor suffer far more than the rich. There is really, you know, it's a misnomer to call this a middle class problem because, you know, honestly, there is very little, there is no middle class in India. We are either poor or rich and the poor suffer a lot. And that's about 87% of the population if one were to go by the Niti Aayog's figure of 25,000 rupees per, uh, per household income. And that we are taxing 87% of the people with this high tax rate. And it, any tax regime that taxes the bottom 87% and leaves the top 13% at a 15% or a 25% income tax rate is unfair. That is the reason why when we talk about fuel prices, it is important for us to look at the overall tax situation in the country. And that, I'm afraid, is coming from okay. a, a misguided belief that petrol prices can remain high because demand continues to be high, because the elasticity is working that way. Second, that fuel prices are high okay. because states uh, levy higher charges. Third, fuel prices are high because international prices are high. You can take any number of excuses, but if we really want a low inflation economy, if we really want to ensure that, the, that this economy supports those who can't afford high value health education and food, then it's necessary for us to do everything to keep fuel prices low. And that includes yeah, okay. adding them to the All GFTs. right, I also... Yes. Okay, okay. I also want to uh, talk about the total excise duty and the state VAT that is collected. Uh, Salman Soz, uh, I'll just come to you. I know uh, you want to make a point, but I'm going to come to you. Uh, so let's also have those graphics put out on the screen, which say, uh, which also say that uh, the number of the total figures of excise duty and state VAT that was collected. And in 2022-23, the total excise duty which was collected has been 2,87,575 crore rupees while the state VAT has been 2,88,086 crore rupees. With that in mind, Salman Soz and Aras Pathania, this question is for both of you. How is this money utilized? Where is it being utilized? I know there are a lot of nitty-gritties to it, but you know, as a, a tax-paying citizen, as somebody who's burdened by the fuel prices, I want to understand from both of you, where does this money go? What happens to it? Because, uh, you know, the Aam Admi is just concerned with the roti kapra makan. We'll go to the petrol pump, we'll get our vehicles refilled and we'll move out. But where is our money being used? Where is it going? Um, uh, so, you know, before I address that, uh, because my co-panelists raised some issues about oil marketing companies and their losses, I think that needs to be addressed. Uh, just last year, uh, oil marketing companies made 33,000 crore rupees. This year, there's, uh, according to a Crystal report, they're going to make one lakh crore rupees. Uh, and by the way, the oil bonds that we uh, we keep hearing about were 1.5 lakh crore rupees. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, in the nine years of this government, 32 lakh crore rupees have been, uh, you know, uh, uh, procured by way of fuel taxes. So there's an enormous amount of money that has been collected either through fuel taxes or through GST, which, as one of my co-panelists said, these are regressive taxes. They affect uh, uh, you know, uh, the poorest, the most, and the middle class, if you want to call it a middle class. So uh, so we have to be careful that when you have too much uh, regressive taxation, your overall economy cannot do well. And that is exactly what has happened. Now, in terms of what is what uh, is happening with the money that the government collects, of course, the government would be in a better position to, uh, you know, say that, but, uh, or address that, but uh, the government can say, that we have so many schemes like PM Kisan and Mandrega and other things, and we are uh, uh, trying to create welfare schemes for people, etc. But the government's schemes are not able to create jobs, will not create jobs. We know that now. 
We, I, I think that is pretty much set. The government is unable to create jobs. The government is not even able to fill the jo job vacancies that they have in government. Forget, uh, you know, forget uh, creating uh, mass employment. Uh, I think they're presiding over mass unemployment. So, but mind you, even the schemes of the central government that people talk about a lot, like PM Kisan, 60,000 crores a year uh, uh, outlay, not a whole lot. Manrega, 60,000 crores again outlay. It's not like, uh, you know, the collections are, uh, you know, uh, and, the, and the government has more than just these taxes. They have income tax as well, corporate tax as well. Uh, I think the general sense that people get is that they're not getting a good bang for their buck. And I think the reason for that is because Aris people Patania do not see to public service delivery yeah. in the way it ought to be with all these finances. Uh, okay, Aris Patania, please respond to Directly coming to the, to the question posed by you, Shreya, that people's money for people-friendly policies and people-friendly programs. For the first time, there's a government in place which has ensured there's a graph of successive government which were in place since the past 70 years. And there's one government which plans and which has virtually done on spot. No house without a toilet. No house without an electricity connection. No house without portable water. And virtually every Kisan with Kisam Samridhi supplement also. And above all, the Ayushman of Bharat. And in Jammu and Kashmir, no survey. 100% households, may he be a chief minister, minister or a governor putting up in Jammu and Kashmir, he is covered by the Ayushman of Bharat, the revolutionary scheme of the Bharat Sarkar. My viewpoint remains that the best management of oil prices, the best diplomacy, we also call it as oil diplomacy, maintaining good relations with Russia and Prime Minister has boasted that we have been able to, and he has right in doing so also, that we have been able to buy cheaper oil from Russia also. You see how beautifully we managed Russia-Ukraine crisis. How how we are able how we are able to get into a cozy contact okay, with the, the OPEC. Oh, Aris Patania, this is about it's, fuel it's, pricing. It's, 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 it's this is not about our foreign relations with different countries. This is be. about fuel pricing. Let me also get Far in Amirullah Khan. Yes, Amirullah Khan, uh, you know, we're buying oil from Russia at a cheaper rate, at a discounted price. How much of Russia-Ukraine conflict affects prices back home? Well, you know, uh, that that's what is the, what baffles us, that uh, half the story is pretty intuitive, that when prices went up because of the war, prices went up domestically too. And that is understandable. Everybody agreed to it when it was sold as such, saying that, look, there is a war going on and our biggest supplier is under duress. Uh, prices are going to go up and everybody bought that argument. But now when prices are going down and they're going down pretty drastically, uh, people are uh, are asking that question. And uh, you know what, what struck me very interestingly in the clips that you showed, Shreya, was uh, that something seems to have happened to the Indian consumer. You know, this very nice gentleman, he was saying that he requests the government to reduce prices now that prices are going down. And it struck me that there was a time when we were growing up and we would have said we demand that the government prices should come down. Now we are kind of requesting the government, you know, hoping that the government is going to listen to us. There is a, some kind of a, of a, a you know, um, an attitude where we are, where we are, where we are getting more and more okay with uh, high taxes, and that uh, that seems to me very baffling in a situation when there is uh, when the economy is under duress and people people's money, personal incomes are getting tighter. Uh, uh, there is no real protest at uh, high prices. But you know, Amirullah yeah, Khan, the, the counter argument to this is that the cost of living crisis and the standard of living has also gone up, right? Perhaps 20 years back when petrol and diesel fuel were actually considered a luxury, that time standard of living was also not as it is today. And uh, this is a time when petrol and diesel are not considered a luxury. The counter argument is that the standard of living has also increased. Doesn't, doesn't sell, Shreya. What is the number of people who own cars in India? You know, 20 years ago, 6% of us owned cars. Today, 6% of us own cars. 
the number of motorcycles uh, sold has actually come down in the last 30 years. You know, the highest uh, motorcycles that we sold was in 2010. And since then, the number of motorcycles has actually come down. The sales of tractors isn't doing well either. So, you know, this would have, this argument would have held water if the number of vehicles or the proportion of vehicles had gone up. The number has gone up, but the proportion remains the same. So, you know, there is the consumption story in India is a very tough story. It is not, it does not bear with all this, uh, all this that we are seeing of a consumption boom that we seem to be having. That, that hasn't really happened. What we are seeing is a consumption boom among the top 100 million of the country. And that top 100 million of the country definitely is better off and gets better off every year. But the country is 1,300 million people. And those 1,200 million people that, get, uh, that need to dig deep into their pockets and their savings to pay for that extra 20 rupees of petrol hike, that's a lot of people. We cannot be, be holding 1,200 million yeah. people to ransom and talk about the 100 million who are doing well. Yeah. Okay, let me also quick, uh, quickly get a final word from both the other panelists as well. Salman Soz and Aris Patania. Aris Pat okay, Salman Soz, you wanted to make a point. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, so thank you. You, you know, I, I think we should not let uh, uh, certain statements go unresponded to. And Mr. Patania's remarks about 100% toilet access. And, you know, the government and Prime Minister Modi, they keep making these kinds of claims, but these claims are false. You know, uh, just recently, the, the director of the International Institute for Population Sciences, which produces the National Family Health Survey, uh, basically he was, uh, he was suspended. And what did uh, the, the uh, health survey of uh, uh, the fifth health survey say? Uh, that uh, more than 20% of uh, households did not have toilets, and 40% of uh, households did not have access to clean cooking fuels. So these uh, these kinds of statements we should not, you know. So I want to challenge these statements because that is not what the government's own data says. So the government does not. The the prime minister will say it. But his government's Man. official Man. data does not agree with the prime minister's statements okay. and Mr. Patania's statements. Uh, and you know, I, I uh, 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 what Mr. Uh, uh, what one of my co-panelists said about uh, uh, you know these scooters and motorcycles and other things. These are in some ways markers of middle-income uh, uh, prosperity. But if you look at the data, the data shows that currently the sales that sales of say scooters, scooters. The sales of scooters are at levels of 2018, mm -hmm. something, something like that. Now, business. that is bad news for the economy. Mr. That means that crucial segment. Man. Okay, why do you, why, let, how do you have the courage? How do you have the courage and the conviction to doubt the claims finish. of a sarkar? No, we no, just I come mean, clean no, no, on providing college I mean, no, 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 Mr. 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 Patania. Mr. Patania, the national family, you cannot, you cannot. suspend it, sir, for making false claims. Why, why, why Mr. are you supporting him? Mr. Mr. Patania, Mr. Patania, Mr. Patania, Mr. Patania, Mr. Mr. Patania, you cannot, down, you cannot, I did not interrupt down. you, I did not interrupt you, and now you're interrupting me. I just want to let you know because that the National the Family the Health Survey, the, the fifth survey, said that okay, all these claims to you, about Saman, 100 so please finish toilet your facilities point. are yeah. false. They're false facilities. It's, uh, sorry, these, these claims are false. Uh, cooking oil, uh, cooking fuel, clean cooking fuel uh, claims are false that the Prime Minister keeps making, because your government and the BJP is all about making big, how tall false, claims, false. which come, end up being false. Evidence, how, so, how is it false? <laughs> but you, well, when, when the National Sir. Family Health Service says they, they, this is not true, then how can you say it's true? Did you do, go and collect data yourself? Did Mr. you, Mr. Prime Minister, collect data? You Mr. do not Mr. collect Mr. data. If Mr. you do not collect data, you cannot claim Mr. it. Mr. Salman Sir. I just want to finish. Right. I want okay, to finish. Sir, you've made your point. Let Aris Patania respond to you. I want to finish by saying that they have decimated this economy. How they many created no jobs. Connections. And they How many connections are portable water. Salman Sos, you've made your point. Let, let Mr. Patania respond to you now. My, 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 my very, very, very respectful submission with all respect and responsibility once again, that the NSSO data is the most credible data which is considered by all the government agencies as well as the private players and the media and the social media and the authorized social media point, uh, the, uh, the handlers also. So the number of connections 
the under Ujwala, the number of connections under Jaljeevan Mission, the number of electricity connections, the number of toilets built, they are itself a saga of the success story which has been achieved by the Bharat Sarkar and the dynamic leadership of Pradhan Mantri Modi. You should compliment it, sir. Anyhow, let us be very honest with you. Let us suppose. Okay, okay, Aris Patania, if, if you're claiming these success stories, no, let's also hope soon you have a success story in fuel pricing as well. Absolutely. I, I'm going to have to wrap up this discussion. No, uh, I'm going to have to wrap up this discussion. Aris Patania, Salman Soz, and Amirullah Khan, thank you very much for joining us tonight and sharing your perspective. Hopefully, the Ahmadbi will be getting some relief in the days to come. Thank you very much. All right, so let's move on and get you some updates from the parliament as well. The government of the National Capital Territory of Delhi Amendment Bill 2023.